Hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of K&K Real Talk. This is episode nine, and we are chatting sexy time. We know this can be painful. We hate that it's painful. We want this to be better. And this is a big, big loaded subject. So we are going to specifically doggy ear probably a couple of our topics or the hot topics within this subject and do more episodes on this exact topic. Sex, pain, how do we make it better? How do we make intimacy easier? So if you haven't met me yet, my name is Kenny King. I am a health, wellness, and life coach. I specialize in helping women with endometriosis nourish, flourish, and thrive. I help them feel better um, through natural and holistic lifestyle changes. And I'm here with our, our founder of Endometriosis and Me, Kristen McCroby. Hi, Kristen. Hi, everyone. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. So good to be here with you. Um, yeah, so we will just dive right in. So Kristen, tell us a little bit about your personal experience, but also maybe what you see in here and, and some of your thoughts regarding painful sex, what options we have, and, um, and what we can do to make better. So I'll start with some of my personal experience. Before I had my hysterectomy in 2013, any time that I would have an orgasm, I would be in extreme cramping after, and this would last for a couple of days even. Um, but after my hysterectomy, that particular part got a lot better, which is good. Now this it doesn't happen for everyone. Everyone's hysterectomy is different, but for me, that one part made sex a lot more enjoyable that any time that I did it, I didn't have cramping after. I mean, I still do a little bit, but way better than it was. Like it was crippling. Mm -hmm. um, so for that specifically, um, I can recommend dilators, which help you relax your vaginal opening basically. You start with really, really small ones and work your way up. And that can be a little bit easier for you um, upon entry. Um, another good thing is pelvic floor therapy. They will massage the area. They will teach you tips on how to relax the area. And um, a couple of other things are and and I do know, like, women who have had cramps during or any kind of pain during sex, which is most common during, but I, I've known women that have cramps from a few hours after to a few days after, depending, because it's different for everyone. Um, a couple of other tips would be experimenting with your partner. The old-fashioned styled missionary position is actually the most painful because the uterus is tilted to your back. So uh, a better way could be side-by-side -side doggy style, which is kind of like spooning, and it's a lot easier on the uterus. It's, it's not pushing as much. Um, also, Talk to your doctor about where the adhesions are and talk to your partner about changing positions and what hurts and what doesn't. You have to be very, very open with your partner with this topic so that they know what you're going through so that they feel more comfortable. Because I know, I know my boyfriend personally, he's always thinking that he's hurting me, which I'm very open with him. So... I will tell him if it's hurting me. So you need to let them know so that they don't feel bad or guilty for doing it because they're hurting you. Um, another good tip is find out what time during your cycle is the most comfortable because different times of your cycle, it's 
could be more or less painful depending on what stage it's at. Um, do you have anything to add, Kenny? You know, I love that you brought up that that point on when in your cycle, um, when you might be experience, you know, because that, that's completely true that different parts of that, uh, different parts of your cycle, you're going to be more sensitive in certain areas. And then the placement of the adhesions as well, that is so, um, so important in terms of that aspect of communication, experimenting and exploring, how can I be intimate without aggravating symptoms? Because I think that's the basis of what we're talking about today is, and we realize that some of you are like, don't even touch me, don't even look at me, it hurts if you look at me, <laughs> and we get that. And I'm not laughing about it because it's actually funny. I'm laughing because I laugh when frustration and overwhelm sets in, and um, and and so we do get that. But what we wanna you know speak to today is, what can we do to explore this aspect? Um, I actually had a different experience than, than you did. I, uh, for me, most of the time, not, not through the full cycle, that's another really, that's another point that I think should be shared is each time that sex is painful might be totally different or for a completely different reason. And that's normal too. So you might handle it a certain way and go, ooh, this helps me feel better. And then that same thing doesn't work another time. Give yourself the grace and space to explore and patience to, um, to recognize that that one time doesn't mean every time you do that, it's going to be excruciating. So my experience has actually been that it, orgasm actually helped me helped my system relax. So if, so that actually assisted me. However, it was just actual intercourse penetration that, that caused me, um, pain. And sometimes it would just be pain during, and I could maybe communicate and change positions or change something. And then it would get better. Sometimes it would just need to stop. And then, um, Sometimes if I, and we've all done this, so I'm just going to say it. Sometimes when we ignore our body and we go, well, I'll just like tough it out. Um, that, and it, that can be sometimes the culprit that causes the hours or even days after I have been fortunate enough that I haven't experienced the days and weeks, but I have experienced over 24 hours of pain sometimes swelling or just internal cramping, just depending on the, depending on um, the particular scenario. And so one thing I do want to speak to that you mentioned, Kristen, was the communication factor. Having that open communication with your medical provider, with anybody that's on your team of support. So if you have, if you are seeing a therapist, talk to your therapist about this. If you are seeing um, an acupuncturist, talk to them about it. If you have a health coach, talk to them about it. Anybody that is on your wellness team, it's really, it can be really helpful for them to know this information. Maybe not your personal trainer. That might not be somebody that's going to be able to, you know, like say, Oh, here's how we can help, help this because they might suggest something that could aggravate it. But, um, that's more in the line of that pelvic floor therapy that Kristen was mentioning. So I think that that would be a person I would speak to before like a, a generic personal trainer, unless they have other qualifications. Um, I say that because I am a personal trainer and I think at one point in time, I probably would have, I, I have, but I still have different levels of certification. So even though I would work pelvic floor with people, I had specific certifications in order to do that. And so if it's just somebody at the gym, that might not be the best person to, to bring into the fold. So that's just a little sidebar, <laughs> just a little side note, but speaking up because in this speaking up and this exploration process, 
this is a chance for you to determine how can I be intimate with my partner and it not aggravate and it not create symptoms. And the more you communicate, A, the more they'll understand, the more that they'll see that you are trying and, and the more that you get to um, relax into that. Okay. Let me just see what, what, helps me feel good and connected to my partner. Sometimes we do just have to do the, okay, well, we're abstaining from intercourse, but that doesn't always mean that you can't create intimacy with your partner. Intimacy has so many different levels. And I think exploring those other levels, that's key too. Um, and so that's an aspect where you and your partner can communicate and say, okay, when there's a time where I've just surgery or have this really bad flare up or whatever the case is and I'm in a lot of pain how can we be intimate with one another how can we feel connected as a couple and that's going to be different things for each of you so it doesn't mean that you each need to do everything on each other's list it means hey share that have this communication and share so that you can come to agreements on things that you can do together some might be other things physically but maybe they're not, maybe it's other things. So we all have different, different wants and needs and desires there. And another aspect um, that I want to bring up is when we've experienced pain around sex, around any aspect of sex, a lot of times there's this underlying, um, emotional component and fear component that cause us to be afraid and anticipate pain. And when we're anticipating pain and discomfort, the body tends to tighten. And it's like, we're not going to get anywhere if that's what's happening. <laughs> like if we're, if we're tight and, and you know, you can even, you know, this experience where you've, or maybe you do, maybe you don't. But I know for me, if I've been real worked up about something and then all of a sudden I realize my shoulders are up and tight and I like let them go. Have you ever had that, Kristen? All of the time. All of the time. <laughs> I feel like I'm always like. Yeah. Yeah, where something tightens up. I did that one day where I was, uh, this was a long time ago, but I had this mad rush of this stress scenario at work. And I was trying to handle all these things and I was at a computer and I like, for whatever reason, for two and a half hours straight, I sat with my back extended. So like my back was arched. I sat in a really awkward position. I don't know what the heck I was thinking. And afterwards I was so sore. I could feel it. And I was like, I can't believe I was sitting like that the whole time. So it's the same thing, um, just in a different way. And so if you're, if you know if your entire pelvic region is tied or all, I mean a it's harder to get into the groove of relaxing into intimacy it's harder to enjoy actual pleasure because you're tight and you're afraid and you're anticipating that not to mention the gambit of emotions that are happening during that time this is supposed to be connection and yet I'm afraid and I'm supposed to um, enjoy this opening to my partner and I'm afraid so I'm closed off and that just there's so many pieces of that and and that plays into that whole you know we're not having sex I I can't have sex with my partner right now what if they leave me what if they and Kristen and I were chatting about this before we got um, before we came on today and that is such a huge topic that we just decided together, we're gonna tackle that topic on a separate episode so that we can dive in because we sort of feel like that's Pandora's box. And we wanna make sure that we're really fully addressing that topic so that you walk away from the episode with specific things you can put into place to help you there um, because there's so many avenues to that subject. And, but that plays into it too, right? Like. I'm afraid that my partner, if, you know, if we're not intimate enough, that they might leave me, they might get sick of this because I'm sick, or maybe they don't believe me, maybe they don't take me seriously. And that fear also comes between you and your partner. It also hinders 
your ability to, to relax in the intimacy. It hinders your, I mean, who feels sexy when they're that, when they're afraid like that? Hey, I mean, who feels sexy when they're afraid ever? I don't, I don't know if that happens. Um, except for maybe certain fetishes, but that's not what we're talking about today. So, <laughs> um, so exploring that communication aspect talking to your partner, exploring what relaxes you, how, and I'm not saying like get drunk every time you're going to be intimate. That's not really a solution that might totally serve a body with endo. Um, I'm not saying don't have a glass of wine if that relaxes you. I'm just, there's, there's a happy medium here. We gotta, we gotta meet ourselves in the middle, but um, what relaxes you? Would it relax you if maybe you did a nice warm Epsom salt bath or bubble bath, maybe with some music before. Do um, do certain types of toys help you relax? Do um, what it does if your partner maybe gives you a little bit of massage, or maybe if you guys are really busy and they help you with house stuff so that you can take that. That sounded awful. Help you with house stuff. That is not how I meant that to come out. But what I mean is whatever responsibilities are on the table, if the two of you are truly a team so that you can carve out space for relaxation and unwinding prior to sexy time, that's what I meant. Um, setting the scenario, music, candles, whatever, giving you the space of calm and relaxation and connection. Sometimes we just need to feel connected to our partner. So maybe it's having deep conversation. Maybe it's, there are all these different levels. So what relaxes you? What can you explore that where you can be intimate together? Are you communicating honestly? And um, where are you creating intimacy in your relationship? And one aspect that I want to just touch on is if you're like, how the heck do I relax? Or you don't understand my life. I'm pedal to the metal, hundred miles an hour, stressed out all the time. Go and watch our last episode. That one was a little bit long. It was about um, 58 minutes, but watch it in two, two settings. Um, we, on episode eight, talked all about self-care and we were really specific on, I think seven or eight great self-care tips. And so if you go back to that episode and watch that episode two, you're going to get a few tips that if you implement them into your life, they will support your self-care. They will support your overall health, your experience with endo, and they may be the things that help calm the stress and inflammation of the body so that your symptoms aren't so awful. And that, because I, I believe that's what's really helped me. My, I mean... I don't want to say, I'm not here to say that, oh, I never, ever, ever experienced pain with sex because that's a lie. So I wouldn't say that, but I've gone from being so afraid that we, it would be like, I mean, I was sometimes once or twice a month because it was, I was so afraid and in so much pain. And, um, However, when I started making, or when I really ramped up my lifestyle changes, when I use nutrition, when I use self-care, when I reduce my stress, when I was exercising regularly, all of the things that I've implemented to support endo overall, it's completely changed my ability to enjoy intimacy and to, if I experience pain, it's like, oh, I'm a little bit uncomfortable after, you know, and that can happen from time to time with any woman that's not necessarily endo related, but, um, but I'm also not saying that it's not. So, so keep in mind that just progress is, is progress. And so check out that video to give yourself some ways to support yourself fully. That way you can continue this process of relaxation, exploring communication, exploring with your partner, how, what are all the ways we can be intimate together and create that connection. And, you know, and I just want to, I just want to say once again, 
like we're going to talk, actually, I'm not even going to say it because I already said it. I don't need to repeat myself. We're going to tackle it when we dive more into the fear of losing your partner. It's just such a big topic that if we start chatting about it today, we're going to have you here forever. So, um, so anything, Kristen, you wanted to add to those pieces? I just wanted to add uh, a couple of tips that I like to use now, because I am a medical marijuana advocate. I like to use CBD and or THC bath bombs. They also have THC CBD lube and both cannabis and non-cannabis suppositories are also available. Mm. Yeah, that is awesome. Do you... Um... Do you have a particular recommendation as far as a brand that you really like or something? Um, because I actually, I have way less experience around like the, like the CBD lube and those. Do you have a particular one you recommend? Um, for bath bombs, I actually have, I added a web, uh, recipe to my website for the CBD bath. CBD THC bath bombs. Um, for lube, there's a couple of different companies. There's Flora, which actually makes lube and suppositories. Now, those are hard to find here in Canada, but easier to find in the US. Mm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, those are definitely some. I just know some people, you know, like, are like, oh, yeah, I can go find that. So I just thought I would ask in case any of our ladies are like, where the heck do I start? <laughs> so Well, you can, you can always check out my reviews on my website. I have tons and tons of reviews on strains. I have bath bomb suppositories. Um, there's tons of marijuana info on there. Yeah, perfect. So www.endometriosisandme.com. Chris has done tons of the legwork, research, and personal use for you. So if you go check some of those out, and I think, um, Kristen, in, in the future, I know this is future, but aren't you, are you working on some products yourself as well? Yes, I'm going to be opening up my shop. I'm not 100% sure when that's going to happen, but I'm going to have some clothing and some bath products for sure okay fabulous yeah i'm yeah i'm looking forward to that just i know you'll have like set the bath products that'll be really fantastic so um that'll be great so her website has tons of reviews tons of products and that's something you can check out for more information specifically looking for specific products so perfect okay um so just to encapsulate, it's the exploration, it's the communication, it's finding out what position works for me, talking to your doctor, talking to anybody that's on your wellness team, that's on your healthcare team, to give you the support needed and bringing your partner into the fold in this communication. It's that open communication that's going to really help assist take you to the next level, help you feel heard and understood and um, clear up some of the miscommunication that happens with, with some of these issues. So again, we're going to talk more about this subject. So we will, of course, we have an, a new episode for you every week. Thank you so much for being here with us. Of, of course, we have the endometriosis and me group, the website, you can stay connected with me over at Endometriosis Nourish Flourish Thrive. That is um, my closed group that I operate in um, collaboration with Kristen. And you can also find me at Kenny Rochelle Coaching. So once, as always, if you ladies have any particular topics you want us to tackle, if you have questions, if you have concerns, if you're frustrated and you need support and you want us to cover something and to help you that's what we're here for so reach out to us directly reach out to Kristen reach out to myself we are here for you and we love you and we will see you next week bye ladies